video, we discussed situations under which increases in government's budget deficits and the size of their national debt could drive up interest rates in the economy, increasing the borrowing cost to the government and in the private sector. Before watching this video lecture, you should be sure to have watched the video you see here, the introduction to bond markets and interest rate determination, as well as the videos on the crowding out effect of expansionary fiscal policy. In this video, we're going to have a look at some situations under which increases in the national debt and the size of a government's budget deficits may not, in fact, increase the interest rates or the borrowing costs faced by the private sector. In other words, we're going to evaluate the likelihood that the crowding out effect will occur following an expansionary fiscal policy undertaken by a government. To help us in this lesson, we're going to examine some data that I got from Google's Public Data Explorer. The data we're going to look at today is from the OECD database on the level of budget surpluses and deficits. That's going to be our chart on the top, as well as data from the United States government on long-term interest rates in the United States. Later in the lesson, we'll also be looking at a chart showing the level of household savings in the United States, also acquired from Google's Public Data Explorer. First, let's quickly review the concept explained in our previous video lesson on the relationship between the level of budget deficit and national debt of a government and the cost of borrowing that government might face in the bond market. As was explained previously, when a government runs a large budget deficit, it must issue new government bonds, increasing their supply and driving down the borrowing cost faced by that government. Additionally, large levels of national debt tend to drive down demand for a government's bonds which can further depress bond prices and increase the yield on those government bonds. Therefore, large budget deficits requiring additional issuing of bonds and borrowing on the bond market and the uh, decrease in confidence that large national debts tend to instill among investors increase the cost of borrowing governments tend to face, assuming all else is equal. So in this example, the borrowing costs increase from 5.3% at $95 per $100 bond to 11 0.1% when the price of a $100 government bond fell to $90. To determine whether or not this effect on interest rates is likely to occur in the real world, we're going to look at some data from the United States. So let's study the charts we have here and then see what the actual relationship has been in recent years between the size of the U.S. government's budget surplus or deficit and the long-term interest rates in the economy. In the chart on the top, we can see the US budget balance between 2000 and 2011. We can see that only in the year 2000 did the United States have a balanced budget. Every year since then, the United States has run budget deficits in which the amount of government spending exceeded the amount of tax revenues. Budget deficits really grew following the Great Recession of 2008 when the United States pursued an expansionary fiscal policy under President Obama, which increased the national debt and increased the budget deficit to around $1.5 trillion. This expansionary fiscal policy was known as the Obama stimulus, $800 billion of tax cuts and increases in government spending financed by new debt taken on by the United States government. According to the analysis done in our previous video, the massive increase in the national debt experienced by the United States during the years 2007 to 2009, resulting from large budget deficits as large as $1.5 trillion representing 10% of the United States GDP, should, in theory, have led to a large increase in the supply of U.S. government bonds on the bond market, and the very large increase in the debt might have led to a decrease in demand for those bonds, causing the borrowing costs of the United States to increase. But let's look down at the next chart now and see what actually happened. In 2000, interest rates stood at around 5%, even though the United States had a budget surplus of $200 billion. Since 2001, on the other hand, interest rates on U.S. government debt and long-term interest rates in the economy have steadily fallen even as the size of the government's deficits have grown. In 2009, when the U.S. national deficit reached $1.5 trillion, interest rates in the United States reached their lowest level in a decade at around 3%.
So the question is, what's happening here? How is it that increases in the national debt and budget deficits are not driving up the interest rate as our bond market analysis say that they should? In other words, what we're asking here is why didn't crowding out occur as a result of the expansionary fiscal policy the Obama administration enacted in 2008, as well as increases in the deficit and the national debt in the years leading up to 2008, resulting from persistent budget deficits? The answer to this question is a little bit complicated, but there's some evidence provided in our next chart. In this chart, we can see the savings rate of American households. Savings is defined as any income that households earn but choose not to use for consumption of domestically produced goods or imports or that is not paid in taxes. In other words, this represents all the savings in banks and the investment that U.S. households make. Let's have a look at the savings rate in the years between 2000 and 2007. Savings rates were very low during these years. The average was around 2.5% of income. This means for every $100 that Americans earned, only $2.50 went into savings or investments, including into government bonds. So what we want to know is, why in the year 2007, when savings rates suddenly doubled, did interest rates in the economy continue to decrease? As we can see, in 2007, the savings rate in the United States was only 2.5%. But by 2008, that savings rate had, in, had increased more than twofold to 5.5%. This represents hundreds of billions of dollars of additional savings and investment by American households. And not surprisingly, it represents a massive increase in investment in government bonds. Bonds are considered a safe asset for households to put their money into. During a recession such as that experienced by the United States in 2008, households want to increase their savings in safe assets. In addition, during recessions, other assets that households could save in besides government bonds appear less attractive. For instance, stocks in companies available on stock markets are a risky investment in a period when demand for goods and services is falling. During these times, households wish to put their money into a safe asset. One such asset is United States government bonds. This helps explain why, even during periods of large budget deficits and increasing national debt, it's possible for a government to experience falling borrowing costs and for interest rates in the economy to actually decline. The money that households save, the additional hundreds of billions of dollars represented here, are largely being invested and saved in banks and in government bonds driving up the demand for United States government bonds, thus reducing the borrowing costs faced by the United States government. In addition, referring to the loanable funds market that was referenced in our crowding out effect videos, an increase in savings increases the supply of loanable funds in the private banking sector, driving down interest rates for private sector borrowers, including households and firms. For the reasons explained in this video, it's possible for a government to increase its deficit and debt without driving up private sector borrowing costs and the cost of borrowing money to the government itself. While this is not likely to occur during periods of full employment or a growing economy, it is likely that during recessions, increases in household savings rates and the decreasing attractiveness of alternative assets such as stocks and companies whose performance might be decreasing on stock markets makes government debt a more attractive investment. Big, stable economies like the United States, Germany, the United Kingdom, Switzerland, other Western European nations actually saw interest rates on their government bonds fall during the Great Recession, despite increases in their budget deficits and their national debts. This contradicts the theory of the crowding out effect that says during periods of recession when governments enact expansionary fiscal stimulus, interest rates will be driven up by the increased supply and the decreased demand for government bonds, crowding out private investment and reducing the expansionary effects of the government's fiscal policies.